John Galliano is here. He was one of the most acclaimed fashion designers in the world. For many years, he was the creative force behind Christian Dior and his own label, John Galliano. Then, in a small Parisian bar near his home, he on more than one occasion said the most outrageous things. They were racist, anti-Semitic, and hateful. One of those occasions was filmed. The video went viral. Here's what John Galliano said in that video. I love Hitler. People like you would be dead today. Your mothers, your forefathers would be fucking gassed, fucking dead. You're ugly. When that video was released, John Galliano became the subject of international scorn. He was fired. He was convicted. He has apologized and entered rehabilitation. This is his first interview since the incident. I was asked if I would do this interview, and I, of course, said, Yes. Last night on this program, I did two segments, one on the war in Syria, the other on the surveillance of the Americans by the United States government. Another night, we might talk to a brilliant director or celebrate a great discovery in science. All of these conversations are driven by my curiosity about the world we live in and the human condition. The question is often, why do we do the things we do in politics? in life, and how to make sense of them. And so it is that we talk to John Galliano tonight about what made a man of his distinction, in a moment of fury, use some of the most vile, racist, anti-Semitic language one could use. How does one go from the top to the bottom by one's own actions? And what does it take to recover personally? This conversation is not about rehabilitation or prosecution. It is about why, and it is about John Galliano, who came from Gibraltar to London to Paris to New York and took over the world of fashion only to fall at his own hand. I am very happy to have him here with us tonight. I am glad he's here, and there is much to talk about. John? Thank you for having me, Charlene. I'm very grateful. Let me begin with, what was the best moment of your career? When did you feel that you were on top of the world? I think the best moment of my career was when I moved to Paris to start off my own society, the House of John Galliano. And that was soon followed by the appointment at the House of Dior. That was one of the great highlights of my life. Before you say what the worst moment was, how would you define yourself? What is it that made John Galliano, John Galliano? I am a romantic. I love superb craftsmanship, tailoring. In my cutting skills, I express myself through the bias cut, which is a very central way of cutting. Um, and that's kind of the codes, if you like, or what represents John Galliano fashion. When you were at your best, were you as good as it gets? <laughs> well, I certainly gave 500% when I was there. And you loved it? Oh, I loved it. So it was what you were born to do? Yeah, yeah. So people ask, John, how could you say the things you said? Just to repeat them, because people are stunned that a man who knew, who had opportunities, knew the most interesting people around the world, had access to knowledge and so much, could say things like, uh, effing Asian bastard, I'm going to kill you, dirty Jew face, I love Hitler, people like you should be dead. 
How could you say that? No one was more shocked than myself, Charlene. I mean, when I saw the footage, at that point in my career I had become what is known as a blackout drinker. It's where one can't transfer short-term memory into long-term memory. So I have no memory of that. So you remember none of these words? No. Do you remember being there? No, I don't remember. I wasn't aware of being filmed. But where did all the hatred come from? I too wanted to know that. I've since discovered that when one is a blackout drinker, it can release paranoia of such a state. It can trigger frustrations from childhood. I was bullied. I was gay. I was an immigrant who had just moved to South London. I was persecuted. I was called all sorts of names as children do. Honestly, I couldn't escape. Also, round about this time, I was heavily researching for John Galliano, for the John Galliano menswear collection, which was inspired by... Sorry, I've gone blank. Uh... Rudolf Nureyev who had said some anti-Semitic... Um, when I research, I go completely into what I'm doing. I'm not making excuses. Do you recognize that what you said was hateful, vile, anti-Semitic? I do. And you apologize to everybody? Of course, I apologize. I do, I do. I'm, I'm trying to make amends. But this was just one incident. <sighs> that's correct. You didn't just do this one night. No, that's correct. So people ask themselves, is this a pattern with John? Well, it's a pattern in the sense You that can't look for excuses, John. I know. But along with all the successes came more collections. More demands? At that moment, I was producing 32 collections a year between the House of Galliano and the House of Dior, and each collection would comprise about a thousand pieces. Would you like me to run through the collections? No, no, no. I'll take your friend's word for it, that you were very, very good. Isn't it also true that they tried to stop you? Isn't it true that they literally tried to stage an intervention? Well, I wouldn't call it an intervention. They told me that I should do something about it. About what? Well, there had been in in incidents where there had been complaints about me, my behavior, um, where people had called in to say, John is not well. At all. You can't look for excuses, John. You can't say, this explains everything. Uh, no, I mean, I meant, um, this is, I just wanted to say, because that's part of the work I've been doing. In this past two years and three months, sober. How do you go from having taken over the world of fashion to fall like you did at your own hand? When you see that video, I'm in, in the throes of my disease. A cunning, baffling disease. It's a, it creeps up on you and you become a slave to it, a complete slave to it. I wasn't dealing with my emotions. After all, along with other successes came more collections, more demands. But you recognize that it does not excuse the behavior. Whatever condition you were in, it does not excuse the behavior. No, I recognize that. Do you look I... back now and say that was a forerunner to what happened to me in February? Yeah, it 
was getting worse and worse. And I was mixing alcohol with benzo. Why were you doing it? Was it because of the pressure? I thought it was the right way of dealing with it. And I was a slave to alcohol, to Valium, to sleeping pills. So, I mean, my life became unmanageable. I was hiding the addiction and I would produce, I would turn out the goods. And so while I was doing that, it was okay, no one, it was fine. You know, as long as Don took his bow on the runway and the collection was merchandised and marketed. Should we hold people responsible because they didn't stop you? No, I took full responsibility. I wasn't honest. I should have asked for help. I was self-willing. All those things that one does, that humans do. Sometimes I was acting like a god. And, you know, I'm not. I, now I know I'm not in the driving seat. And now I listen and talk to God daily. So you attribute it to the lifestyle of being in the limelight, in the center of public attention. You know everybody's eyes are on you and you know that every day you are going to be judged, not by the last collection, but by the next collection. Yeah, you are only as good as your last collection. You are only as good as your last collection. In the end, I was emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically bankrupt. I was a troubled soul, a lost soul. I hear you. And yet, there are a lot of people who are addicted and had a troubled childhood who didn't say the awful things you said. You went further than most people. And now it is easy to say, I don't remember, and I was an addict, and I had a troubled childhood. It's too easy. Some people want to say, what can you say to that? Back then, I was the shell of John Galliano. Now, I'm ready to create again. I'm, I'm feeling fit. I'm feeling good. It really all depends on these steps I'm taking. And I hope that through my atonement, I'll be given a second chance. I want a second chance. After all, I dare women to dream. They will always want beautifully cut clothes. There will always be that desire. Those clothes will always be relevant. But I know I have to do this work. What work? The atonement. What do you mean by atonement? Forgiveness. Wait, I'm confused now. Uh, since we took out that chunk the other day, I'm not sure that the whole uh, uh, the, the tour, the mirage thing really comes through. What do you mean? What, I, I'm just, I, I think it's, it's really hard. It's still hard to go from the symbol to, from the person to the symbol. I mean, it's still tricky. I mean, I really feel for him. Yeah, yeah. But still, this uh, sober, contemplative, publicity tour is so obviously spin doctored. I mean, it's like you can hear his publicist yelling in the sidelines, you gotta create at least the illusion of openness. It's, it's obvious. Yeah, but I mean, what should we do though? I mean, we, it's not like we can stick in some Foucault here, just randomly like that. Why not? I think the bit about power being every, everywhere and coming from everywhere could really work here. What do you think? Yeah. And what Anya said yesterday about them, the media forgiving itself for forgiving him sounds really good. Maybe we should just quote that. Yeah. Sure. Should we go back to the text then? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh. <sighs> Okay, you guys ready? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah. You have to be asked for forgiveness and you have to be forgiven. You have to be asked for forgiveness and you have to be forgiven. Is that what you're saying? Well, I can't ask for forgiveness. It is something that is given to you because people think you deserve it. What I'm trying to do is to give back, to share, to teach. So, if anyone has any ideas about how to make amends, please. What's going to be the hardest thing for you in terms of climbing back to find some peace and ability to use your talents? I'm not sure, Charlene. All I know is that I never want to be in that place again. You read about hell, that was hell. I couldn't have gone on like that much longer. It was really hell. That was really hell. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't this the moment where he's supposed to be crying? Yes, it is, but I'm doing my best and it's very difficult because I have to do this in English. Plus, there's a puppet, so yeah, I'm yeah. doing my best. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't like, okay. Um, sure. It's okay, just about. Uh, still though, just one little thing, in mm -hmm. the, like the first part, you know, yeah. the, the first act, mm -hmm. um, you <clears throat> did it again. What? Well, you did it again. What? You said anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic? No, it's anti-Semitic. And I said anti-Semitic? Yeah, it's not anti-Semitic, it's anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic? Yeah. Anti-Semitic. Anti Anti-Semitic, yeah. Anti-Semitic, okay. Yeah, exactly. Anti-Semitic. Anti yeah. <clears throat> and, and, uh, uh, and also, you, you know about <clears throat> the whole Foucault thing? Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Do you think we just ask Anya if, if we could uh, just quote Orwell instead? I just think it's like, it's a cooler reference. You know, like um, what he said about the, 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 he who controls the present controls the past, and he who controls the past controls the future. Wouldn't that work here? Yeah, but I think the Plato quote is more beautiful. What was it again? Uh, uh, oh, you mean the one on the bottom of page six? Uh, yeah. yeah, I have it here. It's here. It's here. Page six. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, those who tell the stories also hold the power. Yes. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. It's so beautiful. <laughs> those who tell the stories yes. also hold the power. It's also like, it refers to the whole metaphor, yeah, allegory yeah, yeah. thing. Okay, so... It's so beautiful. I love Ruth? that. Yeah? Shall we finish? Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, sure. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. I can't control what people think of me. Or what they say about me. I can't control that. I accept that, but I will continue to make amends. Do you plan on doing any more interviews? No, no, no. It wouldn't be wise for me to do that. Well, John, thank you for coming. It was a pleasure to have you here on this program tonight. Thank you for having me, Charlene. I'm very grateful. Yeah, I don't know. I think that works. Yeah, I think that works. Uh, should we go have a drink? Yeah, let's have a drink. Do you want it? Should we bring him? No, no, no. I think it's better if we leave him here. Okay, we leave him here? Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's